Hello, it's The Grape Explorer back once again and today back by popular demand as I'm going to be taking a look at some zero alcohol red wines. Uh, by far and away one of the things that I get asked to review uh, the most uh, from all of you out there, thank you for watching, um, people want me to hunt out and try and find some more alcohol free red wines and that's exactly what I've been able to do. Although I have to say I did feel like I've exhausted all of the local resources because I went online to get a couple of bottles for today's tasting. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please subscribe for more information on wine education and product tastings. And of course, if you're here and you've been here before, let's have a thumbs up for non-alcohol wines. So today I've got two to run through. Uh, again, I've been lucky enough to get some um, varietals that I haven't had before um, from the perspective of a non-alcohol red wine. I've got some Merlot here and I've got a Ganacha Syrah blend here. Uh, this one is originating from France and this one is originating from Spain. So really excited to get into these. Uh, I managed to get these from Amazon and I've put a link down in the description below to both of these products. We're going to start off with the French Merlot. Now this is 100% Merlot. Uh, it goes by the name of Pierre Zero. Uh, sans alcohol, as it says there, alcohol free. Uh, coming from a producer by the name of Pierre Chavin. Um, not a great deal of information on the back of the bottle. What I do find interesting with the non-alcohol wines is they do go to special effort to let you know that these are low calorie wines by comparison to regular wines with alcohol. Um, and so they do tend to give you some of the information with regards to the calorie count. Now for every 100 milliliters of this particular wine, uh, that comes in at only 16 calories. So you're really getting a feel for why low alcohol wines and no alcohol alcohol wines are becoming more popular at the moment. Firstly, people are thinking about their health more obviously from the perspective of consuming less alcohol. But also when you take the alcohol away, alcohol is the biggest contributor to the calories within the wine and therefore people are thinking about their health and also their waistlines. So let's get into this one. Uh, quite pale in colour coming, uh, coming out of the bottle there. But let's see how we get on. So Merlot, 100%. Um, I'm told that it has had some um, barrel aging as well. Now, it hasn't gone into the specifics. And I haven't been able to really find any information about this, but it's getting me starting to think about some of the aromas that I might be getting on this particular wine as I go through the tasting. So color-wise, it's particularly pale. It's a pale ruby. Um, it actually looks a bit more like Pinot Noir in the glass than it does a Merlot. It's really, really pale. So from an aroma perspective, aromas are medium plus. Uh, they are, without even needing to swirl it, I'm starting to get some of the things on this one. Now it does have, as a lot of these low alcohol and no alcohol wines have, a kind of sweeter type of aroma to it. And it tends to err more on the side of almost a grape juice than it does a wine. It's only been a few of the non-alcohol wines that for me have really had those wine aromas that I would expect. And this one is coming across so far a little sweet. Perhaps it needs a little bit of time in the glass for it to get comfortable. Um, but let me give it a swirl and we'll see what we're picking up on it. For me, the first thing that jumps out is actually an aroma of, of grapes, um, but there is some vanilla here as well. Now, this is clearly something that they have been able to get from some of the barrel aging. Now, again, I don't know if it's been aged in oak barrels or if they've used oak staves. You know, some wines are, um, are given an oak characteristic. They're not exactly put in a barrel as such, but pieces of oak are actually put into um, a metal tank, for example, to try and impart some of those oak aromas. So I don't know how it's been done, but of course these are slightly cheaper wines. The flavours that are coming through are, are much more on the red fruit side of things than on the black fruit side. I get things like strawberry, get things like raspberry. And again, red grape is something that's quite significant on this one as well. So now that I've given it a good swirl, let's give it a bit of a taste. Just whilst I'm spitting out my wine there, people always comment on my no alcohol videos, why am I spitting out the wine? And that's because I'm tasting it right now, I'm not drinking it. And I still want to go through the same procedures that I would do for a wine, regardless of whether it's got alcohol in it or not. 
because tasting just helps me understand some of the qualities of the wine. And of course, I've swished it around in my mouth as well. Not always particularly nice to swish a wine and then drink it. So despite that sweetness, the wine is dry. It's got some acidity, but not a great deal. At medium minus on the acidity. It's quite pleasant, it's not unpleasant at all. Um, it still for me has a, a slight sensation of, of grape juice coming through. But I'm definitely getting some of those red fruit qualities that I was getting on the nose with this one. Yeah, the more that it stays in the glass, it is starting to resemble something a bit more akin to a Merlot and perhaps what I might have expected from that. But it's not unpleasant at all. It has some length, not a lot, probably medium on the length, very light bodied. You know, those, those lighter colours that I was seeing in the glass are absolutely ref reflected in the body of this particular wine. It's a light wine, it's got medium minus acidity, it's got a medium length. You don't get a sensation of tannin at all. There is no alcohol, of course. But it's very quaffable, very enjoyable. But I have got some nice acidity going on. There's some nice mouth watering with this particular one. I mean, in conclusion, what I would say about this particular one is it's in balance because, you know, the, the aroma intensity and the flavor intensity are similar. It's light in color and it's light in body. You know, these things, th these sorts of things are matching up quite nicely. It has an okay length. I'd say it's medium, the length. Um, it's not particularly intense or complex. Whilst I get some of the vanilla on the nose, I'm not really getting a sense of any barrel aging on the taste. Nothing's coming through in that perspective. So overall, I would say that this wine is good. This was actually a pretty good price. Um, I think it was around uh, £5.50 or £6 uh, from Amazon for this particular wine. Which again, for a, a no alcohol wine is a little bit higher than what I've been able to get in the shops. Um, but I actually think it's, it's packaged really well. It looks incredibly professional. Um, and of course it has those advantages of that it's low calorie, no alcohol. So Pierre Zero, the Merlot, uh, not a bad effort at all. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our second one. Now I'm particularly excited about this second one because it comes from the producer Torres. Um, they are a very well-known Spanish producer. They've been producing wines for around 150 years now. And I did look up a little bit of information about this one before I purchased it. And this was first introduced in 2008 um, as a non-alcohol wine. That's when Torres started doing it. So. I'm hoping with 11 years of experience behind them, they're gonna be able to create something that's really good. The grapes in this particular one are Ganacha or Grenache and Syrah. It's a blend of the two. Uh, so really keen to get into this one and, and to see what happens. Whoa, that is purple. Okay, couldn't be more different to the last one. That is a purple wine. Um, it's really purple, it's really vibrant. It almost goes to a hot pink on the rim. Um, that's incredible. It is a deep purple in colour, uh, going to a hot pink rim. Um, let's get that around the right way. Uh, let's, so let's get a check on the intensity of the aroma. Really good aroma that comes across like a red wine, which I think the other one did after a little while. This one's really done that for me immediately. Uh, let's give it a proper swirl though and see what we can pick out. Yeah, definitely some pepper, which is coming from the Syrah on this one. It's starting to go into the um, darker fruit side of things from a, from a aroma perspective. Yeah, it does smell quite dark actually. It smells of black cherries. It smells of blackberries, black currants as well. But it's really, really got, and I can't emphasize this enough, a fantastic aroma. So they've done a really fantastic job in getting this one from an aroma perspective where it should be that wouldn't make you think that it was a, a no alcohol wine. Yeah, really, really good job there. Okay. Mm. Fruity, but again, really getting that sense of wine. Little bit of a sense of tannin. It just dried my mouth out ever so slightly as I had some there. But this feels like a bit more of a professional effort in the nicest possible way. The Merlot is nice, but I think an established producer such as Torres here have done something really special. Mm. 
Absolutely fantastic. I'd say the acidity is good, it's about medium. The tannins are, there are some tannins, but they are low. Um, there is a drying sensation, but it is low. For me, the length is about medium as well. Um, in my glass, actually, I think this is a little bit cold. It might be just where I've had it in the house. It could probably benefit with a little bit of warming up. Flavors that are coming through though, definitely cherry. Cherry really sticks out for me on this one. There's actually a little bit more red fruit on the palate than I would say there was on the nose. The nose was a little bit more, a bit more on the dark fruit side of things. But this is incredibly fruit forward. And again, I'm not really getting the sense of any um, secondary aromas translating into the taste. This is all fruit for me. And would be really well recommended for me. So. You know, going through this, yes, it's in balance. The aromas, the intensity of the flavors are all in balance. It has got a better length than the last one, only slightly. Again, for me, it's not intense or complex, um, but I would say this one is very good. Um, this is certainly a step up from some of the other non-alcohol wines that I've had in the past. Definitely something I would be recommending. This one's done a really good job of capturing some of those characteristics of wine. Um, in this case, in a very small bottle. So bravo to Torres, I think they've done a really fantastic job there. But I did really enjoy them both. They're both different for different reasons, of course. They're different grapes, but they are particularly different. Um, I'm gonna be able to go away and enjoy both of these this evening. Um, so there we are, a couple more zero alcohol red wines for you to think about. Like I say, I have put links to where you can buy these wines in the description below. And as always, you know, I really want people to comment and let me know if they want to see more of this type of stuff. I'm always on the lookout for some really good low alcohol wines and no alcohol wines. So if you've got any recommendations or you'd like to see something featured, please drop me a line below. But for now, I will say cheers. I was hoping they'd clink a bit better than that. Cheers, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.